Hey everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial we are going to be looking at an animated texture transition and we're going to be transitioning between two materials. So this is something that you can do if you, for example, have a product with one color and you want it to showcase it, you want to showcase it with another color, for example. Um, but there might be a lot of um, yeah, ways or a lot of instances where you want to use this effect. So I thought it would be cool to show you. So I'm using Octane for Blender and uh, I figured out a way to do this uh, effect st strictly within the shading of, um, of Octane. And uh, so yeah, let's just get straight to it. So this is our scene. I've just set up a simple camera with an HDRI and I've just framed up uh, this earbud here with a couple of other earbuds. Um, so in this scene here, we want to make the transition happening on, on this main part of our earbud here. And uh, so we want to go into the shader editor here and we are actually going to be adding a new material. So we want a transitioning be happening between two materials. Um, so yeah, first we need, of course, the, the main material, and I'm just going to hide these ones here just to tidy up the scene just a bit, just so it's easier for you to see. So this is our first material, and I right click, and then I join this in a new frame and press N and we can call this material one, for example, just so we are clear on what we have uh, inside of our uh, inside of our uh, frame here. And I'm just going to duplicate this one here and I'm going to add this one in another frame and you might guess that we are going to call this one material two, just like this. So now we have one material and another material. So you can see this one, we are going to give this just like this orange feel here. And you can see if I plug this into the output, we will get the orange feel here. So now you might think like, how do we mix these things? So if I just search for like mix material, uh, we'll get this one here and we can sort of add one, this one to the second material and this one to the first. And now you might uh, think, ah, we, we uh, mixed those two. And then with the amount, you can sort of like change how much each of them uh, affect the scene. But we don't really want to blend these two. We want to make sort of like a transition where we have a, like a hard color on the one end and then the other color on the other end. Um, so we're not going to use this node actually. We're going to use a more complicated node called composite material. Composite uh, textures and composite materials within Octane does sort of the same thing as mixed material or mixed textures, but the composite material will give you a lot more options compared to mixed uh, nodes. So the composite nodes within Octane, just so you remember, is more complex uh, and gives you more options um, later on in your shading compared to the mixed nodes, but they can approximately do the same. So we're going to be deleting the mixed material and we're going to add this composite material here in the output. And this one will go into this material one here. And just so you can see, we can expand this note just a bit. And now you can see it says material one and material two, and you can add more materials if you want to, um, and you can delete and whatever you want. So you can mix a lot of materials. I think it'll go up to like eight or something. Um, and then we're going to be adding our, uh, the first material here into material one. So now we have uh, both of these material plugged into the composite node here. And uh, right now, nothing happens. And, that big, and that's because we want to create a mask. As you can see over here, we have material two here. We want to create a mask that kind of shows Octane where to put which color. So we are going to create a mask. So first of all, 
you are going to be needing a planner field because we are going to drive this mask with a field node. So we have a field node here, and then we need the UV uh, W transform so that we can animate uh, by keying the uh, transition. We also need a gradient map so we can better control it. This one could go into the input texture here. And uh, you actually don't need this, um, but I'm just going to show you just as the above that I talked about, uh, talked about before. We can add a composite texture, and we also need, when we're working with composite textures, we also need a composite texture layer. So this just means that we can add and you know add more materials and more textures to this stuff here. And I'm not going into that to, in this tutorial here. That will be up for another tutorial. But the composite texture layering system within Octane is really great. And you can do a lot of things like in Photoshop and stuff like that. So, um, but this is basically our our frame. And um, I'm just going to highlight all of these. And then I'm going to join them also in a new frame. And we can call this one mask. So let us just take a look back here and see our node tree. So we have a, our first material, which is just white. And then we have our second material, which, which is uh, orange here. And we have them combined via a composite a material node over here. And then we created our mask, which uh, consists of a planar field. It's just a, like, a, 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 some, like a normal plane, a straight field. Um, and then we have a gradient map uh, so we can better control uh, the fall off of that uh, planar field. Um, I have experimented a bit with this scene here. And I, need, and I know it needs to be 0 0.04 uh, here with the distance to work in my case. But you have to experiment with these values here depending on the object that you yourself are using. And it, and it will need a bit of tweaking just so you are aware, um, just to figure out uh, how it works. And when you do that, it will be easier for you to, to go around. But I will take the output of this composite texture over here and I will add it into the material to mask down here. And now you can see something happened over here. Uh, we kind of like uh, lost our uh, orange field here. So first of all, you can see if I drag the gradient map, you can see that we actually start to get some orange teal over here. And you can see how this is actually already starting to look the way that we want it to look. Um, you can see we can kind of affect how much uh, this should be. And I think we can go maybe, maybe just have it here. And then I will actually go with the UV transform of like 0 0.02. Uh, and maybe I will also go yeah, I think it's maybe 0 0.01 or 0 0.05, 0 0.005. <laughs> it's a uh, small values that we are working with here. Um, but yeah, so now you can see the effect more clearly. We're going from our um, first material to our second material up here. Um, but, and this looks already quite nice and you can totally work with this effect if you want to, but I want to add a bit more kind of substance and a bit more detail to this one. So I'm actually going to be adding a, a procedural a texture here, um, and I'm going to be choosing a noise texture. You can use all of these and try everything out you want and, you know, experiment a lot yourself. Uh, where is it? There it is. And I'm just going to add this one into the scene here. And this should go straight between our planar fill and our gradient. So now you can see if I add this one here, something changed or I add our uh, image here. Um, this one should go up. I will just add this to eight. And now we can play around with our gradient maps again, because you can already start to see we have Maybe you cannot see it on YouTube, but we have some variation out in our pattern down here. 
I'm going to drag this one up, maybe drag this one closer, just like this. We can take this one up a bit. Maybe we need to see more of it so we can better understand what we are doing. Now you can see that we have this sort of like effect over here and we have it more here. So we have like a sort of a, like a gradient touch to this one here. Uh, maybe like this, or maybe like that. Mm, something like this I think would work fine. Um, so it's already starting to look more nice with a uh, more like a uh, realistic kind of growing effect on this transition here. So one of the cool things that you can do now is that you can also play around with the bump maps, which will give a lot more uh, depth to this scene here. So normally you could just add like a like a nice texture here. I actually think it will maybe let me just try and see what this does to the bump. Maybe not much because it's quite oh yeah. Like this. Now you can see we have sort of like a, a weird feel here, but it's affecting all of the orange. We don't want that because we it's not this would not be uh and the earbud that I would wear, I think. I want it to look clean and I want it to look clean orange. Uh, but this is cool. Yeah, I can see all sorts of nice ways to use this. Um, but yeah, this is not what we're, what we're going to do. So I'm going to delete this one. And I'm actually thinking, well, I have already created a mask. So I might be able to use that mask to drive the bump of our node. Um, so what we can do is we can take this texture output here and we can plug that into our bump map here. And now we start to see something really cool. So what you can see now is that now we really have like a transition effect where we where it's it's getting more like solid here, but as it grows onto our uh, earbud here, uh, this pattern down here also helps drive the animation. And on a distance, it lo just looks really cool. But I think we can play a bit more around with like the values here, so it's not so it's not that much. Maybe something like, maybe something like this is cool, like this. Um, so yeah, so this is a really nice way I think to 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 do this effect here. Um, you can play around, so you can, for example, add another color up here. Uh, to make the transition also look quite nice. Um, yeah, you can play all sorts of, do all sorts of things. Um, you could also play around with the, um, with the noise texture here. You can bump this one up so you have more fine. If that's the look you want to go for, uh, a more refined noise pattern. You can also play around with different textures or have your own texture maps and plug them into the masking. Just think of this node as a mask and a mask that determines uh, how the transition will look between the two objects. For example, if this wasn't uh, linear, it will be constant and this will look different as well. This also looks quite nice if we go back to the this one here. Now it's more sort of like a like what we would uh, just see right this. Now it's more like what we would see as like a coding effect where it has like a like a golden uh, like a rim on the edge of this one and it's like a liquid going up into the uh, into the earbud and like sort of painting it in another color so you can also play around with the gradient map and the uh, and the interpolation value here if it should be linear like this creating a really uh, interesting effect and uh, or if it should be going more like constant, so it's more like what would be maybe more realistic, but no, not this is realistic, and that's the cool thing about it. So you can do whatever you want, just like I do. And uh, so yeah, so um, so you can see is it's it's some sort of like advanced shading tutorial this one, um, but the node tree itself is actually quite simple. It's not a lot of nodes and you just have to know about like the planar field and like you have a composite node also and 
these composite notes are so uh, so interesting to go into in Octane. And uh, I will be doing more tutorials uh, with texturing and layering and different blend modes also. And yeah, so this was just like a beginning and uh, hopefully you got a lot out of it and can try to start implementing this on your own uh, videos. And uh, yeah, so um, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I know it's been uh, quite a while since I last made a video. I'm hung up on a client project at the moment, but I uh, hope to be uh, doing more videos frequently forward on. And uh, yeah, just write a comment down below if you have any questions. And uh, remember that I have a Patreon and uh, I also have a Discord server for my patrons only. Uh, a Discord where we are uh, discussing, you know, 3D related stuff. I've just made it. Uh, so that's not a lot of, in it, but it's a place where if you are a patron, um, you will get a lot of feedback and I will also uh, give feedback. We can post images or if you have other technical issues, we uh, maybe there's someone else that knows the answer. And yeah, it's just a, a professional discord for people that um, are serious about uh, commercial uh, 3D. Uh, especially within Blender and also Octane, but but of course Blender and um, and everything else related. So um, yeah, so see you for the next one, and uh, yeah, have a great uh, evening, day, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, so uh, see you next time. Bye.